the legendary Sharps. Many of you will recognize that phrase instantly, as the Sharps rifle is synonymous with the movie Quigley Down Under, a story of an American long-range sharpshooter whose weapon of choice was a 45 110 Sharps rifle, model 1874, who went to Australia with a presumption he would be killing wild animals for a rancher. Those of us who have seen the movie know how things go once he gets there. I have here today my 1863 new model Sharps Cavalry Carbine, chambered in 4570. This particular one is made by Army Sport in Italy, imported and sold under Chiapa. It is a single shot rifle with a falling block action which is actuated by a lever. The lever also serves as the trigger guard for the single trigger. The carbine sports a 22 inch round barrel, a fixed blade front sight, and windage adjustable rear sight with a flip up ladder ranged to 800 yards. I have had a modern tang sight mounted to the rifle specifically for hunting and short to medium range competition. The reason it has been labeled as a new model is due to it being an 1863 copy chambered for a metallic cartridge. With it, I'm going to go over a less commonly discussed topic, the history of the Sharps carbine. Throughout the presentation, I will toss in a few videos of shooting the rifle as well. The Sharps rifle is a large bore single shot rifle. It was designed by Kristen Sharps in 1848 and given its first start in 1850 manufactured in what is now Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. In 1851, production moved to Windsor, Vermont, and later to Hartford, Connecticut. In 1876, the company relocated to Bridgeport, Connecticut. The company produced a variety of rifles and calibers ranging from 40 to 52 caliber until the company went bankrupt in 1881 due to the popularity and growing preference of repeating rifles. From 1850 to 1881, over 120,000 rifles of the Sharps design were produced. The Sharps rifles and carbines were breech loaders, meaning they loaded from the receiver rather than from the muzzle. They could be loaded with loose powder and bullet or by using paper cartridges. The front of the breech block had a sharp edge to cut off the back of a paper cartridge when it was closed, exposing the powder. Once the breech was closed, a percussion cap was placed over the nipple, which when struck by the hammer, ignited the powder and fired the charge. In addition to the percussion cap, some models used primer strips, which essentially placed a new percussion cap over the nipple each time the hammer was cocked, making fire, firing from horseback easier. Sharps rifles and carbines were preferred over rifled muskets by military sharpshooters due to their superior quality, range, accuracy, and reload speed. A well-trained soldier could reload and accurately fire a Sharps an average of seven times per minute, more than twice the speed of rifled muskets. They were also much easier to load from a kneeling or prone position, with an effective range of 500 yards and capable of hits out to 1,000 yards. A notable unit that used Sharps rifles during the Civil War was the 2nd U.S. Sharpshooters and the 13th Pennsylvania Reserves. Here we go. So what is the difference between a rifle and a carbine? The most noticeable factor is barrel length. While Sharps rifles had 28 to 34 inch barrels, the carbine only had a length, barrel length of 22 inches. The shorter length appealed greatly to cavalry units. As you can see on my cavalry carbine, it has a saddle ring, used for, as the name implies, attaching to a saddle. By 1863, many of the Union Cavalry units carried the Sharps carbine, commonly found chambered in 5070. Notable units that carried the 1859 or 1863 carbine were the 1st Maine Cavalry, and by sev several members of the 1st Cavalry Division, led by General John Buford. Later, during the last year of the war, several cavalry units switched over to the, the Spencer carbine. While similar to the Sharp in, in many ways, its distinct feature was a seven round tube magazine in the buttstock and was chambered in 5656. Put it up, give it a try, see if we can't make After it. the war, Sharps continued to make several more rifles. While some were still for military use, they found the most use with law enforcement, such as the Texas Rangers, and hunters of buffalo and other large game. The final Sharps rifle was the model of 1878, designed by Hugo, Hugo Borchardt. It saw only three years of production before the company shut down. 
Today, several companies make reproductions of the Sharps rifle and carbine. Uberti, Pedersoli, and Army Sport, all Italian-based, manufacture excellent reproductions almost identical to their originals. Many parts are even interchangeable between the originals and their reproductions. C Sharps Arms, a Montana-based company, also makes a very high-quality reproduction, and a buyer can customize their rifle to their liking prior to it being made. Reproduction Sharps are highly sought after by modern-day hunters and competitors. While these rifles are made to modern specifications, finding factory ammunition that is suitable to fire them can be a challenge at best. Ammunition such as Hornady's Levolution is too high pressured to safely use in a Sharps rifle or other single shot reproductions such as a Trapdoor Springfield rifle. Buffalo Bore and other specialty ammo companies do produce lower pressure cowboy loads, but they are generally expensive. For this reason, many who shoot these older rifles load their own ammunition. There are several loads that use modern smokeless powder while remaining under the pressure limits of 28,000 CUP. Shooters that prefer a more original and traditional experience, such as myself, load the cartridges with black powder or an appropriate black powder substitute such as Pyrodex. In another video I will go over loading black powder cartridges, my personal load specifications and the loading process as it differs slightly. However, that is an entirely different video. Nice solid smack of the 405 grain bullet hitting the wood down there. That big piece of plywood as our target backing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next one. We'll see you here next time on Rich Mirror Outdoors.